Well, good morning, Encounter Church. How are we doing this morning? All right, good morning online. Go ahead and stand up to your feet. Let's worship God in this house this morning. In the calm and in the storm, you are God forevermore. When my fearful thoughts rise up within me, your comfort delights my soul. So I will praise you all my days, cause there is power in your name. And when darkness and trials attempt to invade and destruct me, here's what I say. Come on! I speak joy in my life, joy through the sorrow, joy through the pain, joy for tomorrow. Jesus is in me, so his words I will employ. I speak joy. Come on, sing this out. God the Father, God the Son, Holy Spirit, three in one. You're my light and my healer, my love and redeemer, my joy and my glory. So I speak joy in my life, joy through the sorrow, joy through the pain, joy for tomorrow. Jesus is in me, so his words I will employ. I speak joy. Come on, church, you've got joy in this house this morning. Give me a shout. Woo! Come on, let's sing this next part. I got joy in the morning, joy in the evening, joy through the day, joy when I'm sleeping, joy in my heart, down in my heart to stay. Come on, sing that with me. I got joy in the morning, joy in the evening, joy through the day. Joy when I'm sleeping, joy in my heart, down in my heart to stay. I got joy in the morning, joy in the evening, joy through the day. Joy when I'm sleeping, joy in my heart, down in my heart to stay. I got joy in the morning, joy in the evening, joy through the day. Joy when I'm sleeping, joy in my heart, down in my heart to stay. Come on! So I speak joy in my life, joy through the sorrow, joy through the pain, joy for tomorrow. Jesus is in me, so his words I will employ. I speak joy. spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me.
been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. And you have been so, so kind to me. Come on, church. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leads to 99. I could learn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, yeah. Oh, your love, oh, it's so awesome, God. Sing this out. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Come on, lift your voice. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Now you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, now you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No, I won't kick down, no, I won't tear down, coming out to me. Only overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Though it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Come on, give God a hand this morning. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles.
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how
we give Jesus some praise this morning? Come on. Let's lift our hands to Jesus. Let's sing this one more time. Here's my heart, Lord. Let's lift our hands to Jesus, to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and let's just give him all glory today. Let's make it about him, not about us. Let's give him the honor and glory. Let's sing that one more time, man. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? God is good. We can be seated. We got some more baptisms this morning. Amen. God is moving, and he's moving in this church. If this is your first time here, or you have never filled out a Connect card, would you do that for us? To the seat back in front of you, please fill that out. We would love for you to do that. We love you guys. We're so glad you're here. And we're believing that you're going to have an encounter in the word today, just like we did in worship. Can we give our praise team a hand? Can we give them, they work so hard. They do so good. Well, I'm going to pray. And then once I'm in praying, you will fo- we will focus at the baptistry and watch these kids and get declare their lives. Amen. That it's such a powerful thing because they are being buried in baptism and risen in new life. Amen. Well, Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we are here, not by accident, but because we love you and we want to honor you, Father. We thank you for those who are getting baptized this morning, the, the declaring, Father God, that they've made you Lord of their life and proving it with their faith. As in it, Just we thank you so much. We thank you for the tithes and the offerings this morning. They're given in faith. They're sowed into good ground. Father God, you, you, we weep. Father God, and we believe in that the harvest will come to manifest as we sow seed in this morning, whether they're giving on the phone or the app, Father, or with actual money, Father, it all is the same, that we trust you with our finances. Father, we thank you. We walk in supernatural favor. In Jesus' name, amen. Peyton Romero here. Uh, one thing about Peyton, she was born four months premature. Uh, her first <laughs> night, she had a 20% chance of survival, just to make it through the night. And here she is today. You ready? <laughs> you you just go over here, uh-huh. Baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in baptism. Hi, everybody. This is Janelle. She's part of our Encounter Youth back there, and she came to me on Sunday saying that she wanted to get baptized. Um, so you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Do you make Jesus Lord of your life? Yes. Okay. 
baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There you are, baptism. Had to change fast. <laughs> there we go. This is my son Jackson, and uh, he's made Jesus the Lord of his life, and he wants to get baptized. And you ready, buddy? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll hold your nose. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in baptism, risen in the newness of life. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's just praise God for what he's doing here at Encounter Church just one more time. I said this a few weeks ago, but you know, this was never planned. These baptisms were never planned. We didn't even have a baptism Sunday um, on the calendar until later into the spring. And here today, um, that puts us over, we're over 20 baptisms here at Encounter Church just since the beginning of the year. And I'll tell you what, that is awesome. That is a blessing. And that is just more proof that God loves what we're doing here at Encounter Church. And we're just going to continue to praise him. We're going to declare that he is worthy. We're going to magnify his name. We're going to continue to lift him up. And we're just going to continue to reach for him. And his promises are always yes and amen. So God is good in this place. God has his hand over Encounter Church, and it is an honor and a privilege to be here before you to dive into his word this morning. So you guys ready to dive into the word? Amen. All right, but before we do that, we have a little bit of business, and I just want to go into a mode of celebration for just a second. So Pastor Jay and Miss Helen, if y'all would stand up just right where you are this morning. If you'll turn your attention back here, Pastor Jay and Miss Helen, they celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary this week, and we want to celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. For everything that they've, they've done, we would not be here today without them. So thank you, and enjoy your 60th and many, 60th, many more to come. Well, let's go ahead and let's dive into the series that we have been in, and we've been in a series called Developing Our Fruit, and we're looking at, at Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, and we're taking our time, and we're looking at each of those fruits, making sure that we understand them so that we can develop them, so that we can walk in the Spirit. And if we remember what Galatians chapter 5 says, it says, for those that walk in the Spirit, they will inherit, and that's what we're doing. We are walking in the fullness, and we're inheriting everything that God has for us. You know, Jesus went to the cross. Jesus went to the cross for Joe Dwyer. Jesus went to the cross for you. Jesus went to the cross so that you could live a life of fullness. And I am believing that those that are hearing my voice, voice this morning, those that are online, those that are in this place this morning, that you are starting to see the fullness of what Jesus did for you on the cross. Yeah, somebody give me an amen. Je Jesus hung on the cross for you to live a life in a life of abundance. God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for me, that he sent his son to die for you. It is my hope and it is my belief that we never discount that, but we take that. We take the fullness of what Jesus did on the cross and we take it past just salvation, that Jesus is more than just our fire insurance, that we, be, we begin to live in the fullness and take the delegated authority that God has given us through the name of Jesus to go out there and to be a witness that is empowered by the Holy Spirit and start to win and start to take the harvest and reap the harvest. Amen. That's what we're about here in, at Encounter Church. And we're seeing it every single week as you guys continue to reach out and you're talking to your coworkers and you're talking to your family members, those that may not know Jesus. And we're starting to see those people come and we're starting to see them get the word and we're starting to see the Holy Spirit activate upon the word. And the next thing you know, they are saying yes to Jesus and the baptisms continue to stay full and we're just going to continue the cycle until Jesus comes back. 
Because he is coming back. And the time is getting short. We do not have time to waste. But even though we may not have time to waste, I want to talk to you this morning about patience. So on one hand, I'm telling you to hurry up, get as many people to know the Lord as you can. But on the other hand, today, I'm going to tell you to slow down. We're going to talk about patience. I'm going to start with the end in mind this morning. And what I want you to know before you leave here in 40 minutes, well, I'm just being prophetic. It may be an hour or two. (laughs) What I want you to know when we walk out of these doors in just a few minutes, I want you to know this is a statement I want you to know. And what I want you to know is this, six little words. Get your eyes off the clock. Come on, somebody. That's for somebody in this place this morning. That's somebody for who's online this morning. And I'm just not talking about Sunday morning at 1032 here at Encounter Church. I'm talking about in life in general when it comes to the promises of God. And the promises of God are always yes and amen. But we've got to be patient to see those things through. So get our eyes off the clock. Amen. Come on, somebody. I want you to repeat after me. Six words. Get your eyes off the clock. I want you to turn to your neighbor. I want you to tell him, get your eyes off the clock. Last week, we were talking about the power and patience. How many of you know that Jesus was a patient person? We ended last week, and we were talking about the life of Jesus, and we talked about that when he was 12 years old, he knew that he was about his father's business. We knew that he was about kingdom business at the age of 12. And for 18 years, he was in his carpenter shop, and he was in his craftsman shop, and he was washing people walk by that needed to be healed, and he had to just let them go. And he was washing people that walked by that needed to be drawn closer to God, and he had to watch them walk by. And he did that for 18 years until he's baptized in the River Jordan, and he's filled with the Holy Spirit, and he goes out with power because he was patient in, fa- in the Father's plan. If Jesus is to be our example, we need to follow that. God has impregnated every single person in this place with something good. God has impregnated you with something of kingdom business. But unfortunately, as Christians and the corporate church, we're a bunch of quitters. We're a bunch of half-baked Christians. I'm going to let that sit for just a second. In Counter Church, we are going to be a church that when God calls us to something, we're going to start it, but then we're going to finish it. There's not enough finishing going on in the church today. We're going to take the things that God has placed inside of us, and we're going to be patient. Let me tell you something. If God called you to encounter church, you're going to stay at encounter church until God calls you to go somewhere different. If God calls you to teach a connect class, you're going to teach that connect class with everything you've got until God tells you to do something different. If God calls you to start a ministry outside the doors of these church, you're going to do that ministry with the best of your ability until God tells you to do something different. Because if you don't, you're going to shortcut the power, and it's the power of the Holy Spirit that we need to get people in the door to get them saved. Quit cutting Jesus' knees off. If you start something, finish it. we got to get our eyes off the clock. When it comes to the things that God has placed in us, we got to get our eyes off the clock. we got to get our eyes off the calendar. And we've got to stop letting the circumstances that surround us abort what God's put in us because he's placed something great in us. He has placed a great value inside each and every one of us. Some of the most miserable most of the most miserable people that I have encounters with today are people that I know that God has placed something special in it and they quit. We're not quitters. We're not going to let something with some springs in it and some gears and some hands on it, tell us when we're done. I have never got a message on my iWatch that says, you're done now. 
God doesn't work that way. So will you lean in with me this morning and grab a hold of the revelation that God's not done with you yet and you're not a quitter? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not a quitter. I almost fell victim to this one time. <clears throat> I don't even remember the time span now, but I'd been an assistant principal for some time. And I was wanting to work my way up to be a building principal. And a school came open that I really, really wanted to be at. I put my application in. I, I received an interview. I worked hard. I studied for the interview. I went to the interview, and I'm going to tell you right now, I killed it. I killed it out of 22 people. I was the last one that day, and I walked out with the interviewers, and they said, you killed this interview. Nobody was even close to the interview that you just gave. You've got this in the bag. I was very, very excited. That was on a Monday. On Wednesday, I got a call to the support center, and they said, hey, you interviewed really, really well, um, but we ain't hiring you. Okay. Okay. We're not going to hire you. That was on a Wednesday. I'll never forget my call. Had the boys. The boys weren't feeling good. We had church on Wednesday night, and I came into this place, and the sanctuary was turned. I sat in the back right corner, and I was pouting. I was in the, I was in the spirit of pout. And we're having him praise and worship, and this is the first time that God has ever spoke to me audibly. It was amazing. And God said to me, he said, you've got a building. I'm going to give you a building. You're going to lead a building. And it was so loud that just the back of the, the, the hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I turned around, and I looked, and the only thing I saw was that wall. And I know Pastor Jay hadn't said anything. And I thought, oh, great. Oh, great. This is awesome. God's got my back. 30 minutes after I leave this place, I get a phone call from a district that said, hey, we want you to be the principal of the new high school we've got going. And I was like, man, God works that fast. That is completely awesome. I am fired up. He said, all the thing you got to do is you got to do a short phone interview tomorrow, and then you have to decide within the next 10 days. So the next day, I do the phone interview. They offer me the job. I've got 10 days to decide if I'm going to go do this or not. And it was really weighing on me because I knew that if I took this position, it was going to take me away from here. It was going to take me away from my connect group. It was going to take me away from my men's group. It was going to not allow me to come to church on Wednesdays anymore. And I was just, I, it was something just wasn't settling. But I had 10 days to decide. And it was on day eight when God called me to encounter church. Amen. I was this close from not standing before you this morning. But I let my circumstances and I let my feelings and my emotions and I let my pride get in the way and I was going to show somebody. I was going to show somebody that I was good enough. And it almost cost me. Get your eyes off the clock. Say that with me again. Get your eyes off the clock. We are going to stop letting timelines abort the things that God has placed in us. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5 says this, But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, verse 6, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness. So this is what I want to add to what we learned last week, is not only do we have to continue to develop patience, but we have to add faith to patience. Amen. Somebody needs to hear that this morning, and maybe it's me, but we've got to add faith to our patience. Because when we add faith to our patience, yeah, I see you go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. Just do it. Go ahead. He's talking to you. We're going to add faith to our patience. And that's going to help us see the things through that God's placed in our life. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I say that because the things that God has placed in you, you may know and he may have told you, but you can't see inside your spirit. But you know that they're in there. 
I've got faith that God has placed something great inside of me, but I can't see it. And I know that I have to continue to develop my faith so that what God has placed in me can be birthed for this church and for this community. And I can't let my circumstances, I can't let people's feelings and emotions, and I can't let people telling me that the music's too loud and that I've gone too loud to distract me from having patience and faith in what God's placed inside of me. Because I know that his promises are always yes and amen. And I know that God's not done with me yet. But these things have to be developed. Faith and patience have to be developed. And it takes more than just sitting here, listening to me talk to you to develop. Something you've got to work on every day. Every single morning, every time at lunch, every time at night, you've got to continue to work on developing your patience and your faith. God has placed those in you. In teaching, I always found it effective when I was with my students. If I was trying to teach them something, I would show them an example of something that was wrong so then we could compare the two. And that's what I want to do with you for the next couple minutes. How many of you have ever seen the movie Top Gun? And if you do not raise your hand, just walk out of here right now. I'm not even going to look. I can't even, I can't even look. In, in the movie Top Gun, there is a scene after Maverick has flown a sortie and he goes to the debriefing room, right? And his instructor, Kelly McGillis, is sitting in there and she starts to show what Maverick has done and she's using the computer and she's showing it and she goes, you know, you used a split S right here and you switched to guns. And she says this, she says, I want to use this as an example of not what to do, right? I want to use this next example as a teaching tool, and I want to show you as an example of what not to do. So I want you to turn with me to Genesis real quick. I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 15. How many of you know who the father of faith is? If there's one person who Paul in the New Testament describes as a pillar of faith, who is it? Abraham. Abraham has the title the father of faith, except we're going to look at him in just, for just a few minutes as an example of not what to do. And I'm going to show you that somebody that is now called the father of faith had to take faith and patience, and he had to develop those to get to where he was at. Fifteen one. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. You are exceedingly great reward. So we're now in the time of the Abrahamic covenant. This is where God's making his covenant with Abraham. Verse 2, But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless in the air of my house as Eliza of Damascus? 3. Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, uh, indeed one born in my house is my heir. Verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. So God tells him, one that comes from your own body. So we know that God's going to give him a child. Half of it's going to be from him. Let's go, let's continue. With four. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be the heir, but one who came from your own body shall be your heir. Genesis chapter 17, verse 15. Then God said to Abram, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. 16. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. So here's God's promise to Abraham. God says, you're going to have a child that is of your own flesh and blood, and you're going to have a child that is of her own flesh and blood. Right? That's the promise. Does everybody see that? Okay. Verse 17. Then Abram fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, who is 90, year, 90 years old, bear a child? I want to stop right there. I just want to stop. And please put this in your Bible. When God downloads something in you, when God impregnates you with something, don't laugh at it. Please, don't laugh at what God puts inside of you. 
And the second thing is, is don't laugh at what God put inside of you and don't doubt what God ever puts inside of you. Instead of doubting, doubt the doubt. Don't ever question what God puts inside of you, even though it may not line up with where you think you need to be going. You may think that you need to go to Africa and go on a mission trip when God needs you to go over to Eastridge and preach the gospel. Amen. Don't laugh and go, I'm not going to go five miles on the other side of Amarillo. You will if God tells you to. You want to see a powerless ministry, try to do a ministry in your own ability, especially one that God hadn't called you to do. That'll preach. Doubt the doubt. This is where it gets good. Genesis chapter 17, verse 18. And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. Awesome. Isn't this so good? Isn't this so good? Abraham just said, You know, yes, God before me. How about Ishmael? Wait a minute. Who's Ishmael? Isn't this good? No, but if you know the whole story, you'll find out that Ishmael's a half-baked idea that Abraham and his wife came up with to have an heir. So God promises Abraham and Sarah a child. We look at the scripture from him and her, and sometime in the waiting, they had a half-baked idea. They started looking at the clock going, oh my goodness, I'm 100 years old. We better do something about this. And they come up with this half-baked idea that Abraham would have a child with her servant. How many of you know that was not the plan? That was not what God put inside of Abraham. Now, I want to show you something for just a second. I want to take a sidetrack right here. Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. Then God said, no, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. Turn back to Genesis chapter 17, verse 20. I just want to show you something. I want to show you something about God's love. I want to show you a reason why we can say God is good right now. Now, I'm going to show you. This is an example of not what to do. This whole story is an example of not what to do. And what I'm about to show you is not an excuse to do what you want to do. But Genesis chapter 17, verse 20 says, As for Ishmael, God speaking, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him. I will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget 12 princesses and make him a great nation. So I, uh, Ishmael was a half-baked idea, but I just want to show you this. And please don't go out and use this as a game plan. But when you're in, when you're in covenant with God, when you're in a relationship with God, God's got your back. Even though they came up with this half-twitted idea that they came up with, God said, it's still okay, I'm going to help you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bless him. But he says, for my idea, the God idea, the thing that I put inside you, my covenant will be established with Isaac. Get your eyes off the clock. Somebody should have told that to Abraham and Sarah. Get your eyes off the clock. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised us is faithful. Highlight that word wavering right there. What are God's promises? God's promises are yes and amen. Amen. In Hebrews 10, 23, it says, stop wavering when it comes to the things that I have placed inside of you. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, stop wavering. wavering. Now I want you to point to yourself and I want you to say, stop wavering. wavering. This isn't Joe Dwyer's book of great ideas. This is coming from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, and it said, stop wavering on the things that God has placed inside of you. 
You know one reason I really love the Bible, when you think back and you look at uh, Abraham and Sarah? You know the Bible is the only book, the religious book, the book about gods that shows our mistakes? Do you know that's one reason why I really started to believe the Bible? Because I thought, if this, if this was true, uh, if, if the Bible was not true and it was just a sales pitch, why would you put anything bad in it? Why would you talk bad about yourself? It's true. But we're going to stop wavering. I'm going to spend the rest of the few minutes that we have together, and I want to spend a little bit of time talking about faith. Patience has to be developed, and we have to add faith to it. How many of you in this place like to fish? Okay, let me, let me restate that because I don't like to fish. I like to catch fish. How many of you like catching fish? Yeah, that's what I, there's more hands right there. I like catching fish. I like to catch fish. Let's compare faith to fishing for just a minute. Let's say that you're going to go fishing. Let's say that Chris Bosley invites you to go fishing. Okay. Take the boat to the lake. Put the boat on the water. Maybe if Chris likes you good enough, he'll show you one of his honey holes. You go to the honey hole, and you take your rod, right? You got to pick one. Chris got a bunch in there. What do you do with it next? All right? If you just dip the rod in the water and spin it around, what's that do? It's going to get Chris to have a real weird look on his face going, you shut up. Be quiet. Right? So you got to bait the hook. Right? Well, that baiting the hook is like God putting something inside of you. That's when God puts something inside of you when you bait the hook. Now, you've got the hook bait. You, you got the, the, the hook is baited. Then what do you got to do with it? You sit there and wheel it around. Woohoo! Is that what we do? No, we got to put the bait in the water, right? So we drop the bait down. Then what happens? Huh? Do you put the bait in the water and you just reel it back up real quick? No. You don't do that. Even Chris's honey holes aren't that good. No, you got to put the hook in the water. You got to bait it. You got to put it in the water and it sits there. And after a little bit, what happens? You get a bite, and the fish is hooked. Now, the fish is hooked. You've done what you need to do. You've realized what God's placed inside of you. You're beginning to show faith, and you're living for what God's put inside of you. The fish is hooked. Now, what do you do? What do you do? Because the fish is not in the boat. God's promise that says, you don't stop believing in me. You don't stop having faith. You don't stop having patience till what you believe for is in your hands. We want to put that fish in our hands so we can clean it. We can have a fish fry. But right now, the fish isn't in our hands. It's 47 foot below us in the boat. We got to do something. Right? We got to get the fish in the boat. We got to reel it in. And I want to say this. There's two ways to fight a fish. Chris, can you come help me? How many of you know Chris Boz? Let's give Chris a round of applause. <laughs> applause. He's on our board of directors. What do you have for us today, Chris? Got uh, some fishing poles. Is that the one I use in my lucky one? No, this is newer. No. Oh. It's, it's lucky. Let me test it out here. <laughs> it feels good. It's got braided line on it. We're gonna, Chris and I are going to show you a little bit of example right here. This is for real. It's a good one. This is one of those ones you got on clearance. Yeah. 
Amy, this one only costs five bucks. <laughs> I've seen. This is the most expensive rod that he has in his boat. I promise you, I've seen them. <laughs> we've got the fish on, right? Now we've got to get it in the boat. And there's two ways to get it in the boat. See, one time I learned this on a boat with Chris. We were fishing a tournament together back in about 2005. And this is the only, I get to tell this story because this is the only time I've ever beaten Chris Bosley fishing. We're in a tournament and for whatever reason, I'm catching the fish. And Chris goes, you know, you have a chance to win this tournament. And Chris, being the guy that he is, puts me at the front of the boat so that I have a chance to win the tournament. But tournaments have deadlines, and we're bumping up to the next of this deadline. And we're like, you need one more fish. You need one more good fish, and you're going to win. And I was going to win like a 1000 bucks. I was fired up. And Chris gives me the lure. He puts me on the front of the boat. And guess what? I cast it out, and bam, the fish bites it. And you know what I did? I might have said something that was inappropriate. This is pre-coming to church days. And Chris said, give me that, put it back on. And he said, you're going to cash right back there and you're going to catch that fish. Except this time he said, don't get impatient. Don't jerk it out of the fish's mouth. Don't yake on it. Don't break the line. And he said, when he bites it, just give it a little tug and start to reel him in. And I got the fish. (laughs) You can either take the thing of God and yank it out of his hands or you can be patient with it and you can be gentle and you can watch it be birthed to what called God called it to be. Amen. I'm going to close with this. Thank you, Chris. How's your hand? All right. I want you to write this down for me. It takes patience to get a big fish in the boat. It takes patience to get a big fish in the boat. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to go to Alaska, and we went fishing. We were going to go deep sea fishing in the Bay of Alaska. And we got to the boat, and our captain was a younger guy, and he said, you know what, what do you guys want to do? We wanted to catch halibut, because halibut tastes amazing. And here I'm with some other pastors, and he said, what do you, he said I've, got, I've got two spots. He said, I can take you to a close spot, and we'll catch more but smaller fish. That was option number one. But he said, I've got a spot that is an hour and 50 minutes away in the boat. And that's where the big halibut hang out. It didn't take me long. I said, I want to go where the big fish are at. And he said, you realize if you're going to catch a big fish, you're going to be in the boat for almost two hours. I said, I don't care. I came to Alaska to catch the biggest fish that I could catch. So we take off. Two hours later, we get to this spot. He goes, here we are, boys. He baits us up. Man, we're fishing deep, like 200 foot down. I'm holding the reel. I'm getting impatient. Sharks are swimming by. He said, just give it a second. And just a few minutes later, my rod just bent over. And I got excited. 
And I didn't learn much from what I learned with Chris a few years later. Because, man, I'd been watching TV. I'd been watching ESPN. I'd been watching those guys fight those fish on the deep sea. And I grabbed this rod, and it had a reel on about this big. And, man, I grabbed it, and I just went, Rrr! And I said, I'm hung up. I'm hung up on something 200. And he said, 200 foot in the ocean, you're hung up? It ain't moving. It ain't moving. And I'm giving it everything I've got. And I'm, I mean, they've got this guy, he's strapping me in with this belt. And they're sitting me in this chair and strapping me in because they knew I was probably going to go over the side. And I'm yanking on it and I'm yanking on it and nothing was happening. And after five minutes, I think I moved this fish this far. And for 36 minutes, I gave everything I had. I fought hand, tooth, and nail to get this 85-pound halibut to the top of the water. And I want to close by just saying this. Sometimes it takes a little time to reel in the big fish. Get your eyes off the clock and let God do his thing. Would you stand to your feet with me? We're going to go into a time of reflection. We're going to go into a time of reflection. We're going to get our eyes off the clock. And we're going to go into a time of repentance. And we just need to go into this time and we just need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I've had my eyes on the clock. I've had my eyes on the calendar. I've had my eyes on the circumstances that surround me and I've shortcutted the things from you. I have aborted the things that are inside of you, inside of me that you've placed. And I'm so glad that you're here today. This is not by chance. Those that came today, you got something special. You got the word of God. You've got God calling you out and saying, you are no longer are a quitter. You are no longer half-baked. I just want you to just go, Lord, I repent. I repent of that, and I repent of anything that has kept me from receiving your promises. Whether it's sin or laziness, whatever it may be, it could be a myriad of things. We just repent of that right now. And now that we've repented of that, now we're ready to receive the things that God has for us. And we're going to go into a time of celebration. We're going to go into a time of praise. And I am believing that the word has gone forth. And when the word goes forth, the Holy Spirit is activated. And the Holy Spirit is moving on your behalf right now. And somebody in this place has a need. And as we end in celebration, we're going to lift our hands and we are going to praise God in the way that he needs to be praised. We are going to praise him because he is worthy. We're going to praise him for the resurrection. We're going to praise him like he saved us five minutes ago. And we're going to let the power of worship take us out of this place. As we begin to praise, if you need something, if you need prayer in your life, I'm going to have Jack come down here. I'm going to have McCall come down here. We're going to open this altar. And if you can't just shake what's going on in, your, in, in you right now, maybe you just can't let that calendar go. I want you to come down here and we can lay hands on you and we can use our delegated authority and we can use the anointing that God has placed in me and McCall and we're going to let the Holy Spirit begin to go to work with you and we're going to get rid of that. Maybe the Holy Spirit's telling you this morning because he's impressed on me that there's some people in here that you just need to start over. You just need to start over, and it's okay. Maybe you came in here the first week of January, and you hit the easy button, and you hit the reset button, but here we are 28 days later, and you're back to where you were. That's okay. Let's start over again today because God's grace and his mercies are new every day. He loves you every day, and he is great in this place right now.
If you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, come down and let's take care of that. We will keep that baptistry full of warm water. I hope that our water bill is $200,000 this month. Okay, Victor, I mean... Because of baptisms. <laughs> if you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, come on down. But let's just begin to praise Him. Let's praise Him because He saved us. To you, God. My Creator, Lord of Heaven, Lord of Earth, I humbly come into Your presence, singing praises to Your name. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, your grace, your mercy, and your peace. I stand in wonder of your glory, and your perfect love for me and when I'm afraid surrounded by all my enemies you calm my fears and with you I overcome Jesus Lord of my life and the light of my way you carry me to the end of my days, my shield and my fortress, oh God, you are my refuge. You listen to me when I kneel down to pray. You speak words of comfort when I'm not okay, my rock and redeemer, oh God, you are my refuge. I trust you to see me through. Spirit, come fill me with your love and your mercy, your grace and compassion, your everything.
Come on, church, let's sing this. Lord of my life and the light of my way, you carry me through to the end of my days. My shield and my fortress, oh God, you are my refuge. You listen to me when I kneel down to pray. You speak words of comfort when I'm not okay. My rock and redeemer, oh God, you are my refuge. Lord of my life and the light of my way, you carry me through to the end of my days. My shield and my fortress, oh God, you are my refuge. You listen to me when I kneel down to pray. You speak words of comfort when I'm not okay. My rock and redeemer, oh God, you are my refuge. Hey Amen. Can we give Jesus some praise this morning? Man, God is good. What a powerful message. Well, we're about to dismiss, but a quick announcement. This Friday, we're having a parents' night out where you guys can bring your kiddos here and go have a night for yourself. The donate It's going to take donations of $25 is the start point. And what that's going to do is that's just going to put into our youth fund to help pay for camp and for them to get to go to that. So it's $25, and that's a donation to, into the youth fund. And you can bring your kid from 6 to 9 o'clock. You can go out. And our youth kids will watch your kids. It's from Sprouts up to high school. So that's this Friday from 6 to 9. Donation starts at $25 to go into our youth fund. Amen? Well, you guys are dismissed. We love you guys. Thank you for being here. We'll see you back here next Sunday. And reminder about this Friday if you want to bring your kiddos. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Encounter Online family. We hope that you enjoyed the word. We hope that you had your own encounter with God today. Now go out there and have a great week. And also remember, there are three ways to give here at Encounter Church. One is through our website, encounteramarillo.com slash give. Or you can download our app in the app store, Encounter Church. Or you can text to give. Now we hope that you guys have a great week. May God be with you.